In this video, we're going to look at the group one metals. Now, we only have one of them, uh, so we're going to deal with sodium. Let's go have a look at the periodic table where it's found. Okay, so we're back at the periodic table and we're looking at the group one uh, metals. Now, hydrogen is special. It doesn't quite belong with the rest of this group here. Hydrogen is a little bit unique, uh, so it's not, it's not great, its placement here, but this is the best we've got. So we'll just ignore hydrogen for now in terms of the group one properties, okay? We're looking at lithium all the way down to francium here. So this is the group one metals. We call them the alkali metals. So if you recall the last video we just made, the alkaline earth metals, and then we're now looking at the alkali metals. And so we got lithium, you might recognize lithium from uh, battery technology. So in your phones, a lot of modern devices, we use lithium ion batteries. So um, it's used a lot in battery technology. It's pretty good. Um, we're looking at sodium today. So if you recall in the previous video about the alkaline earth metals, as you go further down the group for the metals, they get more reactive. So we should see much more reactivity from sodium than a lithium battery. Uh, likewise, you would see much more reactivity with potassium. That's the letter K here. Uh, however, we're not going to work with uh, potassium here today. We're just going to stick to sodium. So let's go see what properties it has. Okay, so we're back at the bench and we're now going to look at the sodium metal. Um, it is quite tiny because safety. Um, so we're going to do a, a bit of a cut in a minute so you can see it close up. But the first property about uh, the alkali uh, metals is that they are soft. And the reason why they are soft is that what gives, well, let's just talk about what gives metals their strength. It's because of their metallic bonds. Now the metallic bond is formed when the um, atoms of these metals, they have very few valence electrons, if you understand what that is from class. Um, and the fewer the electrons are on the outside shell, uh, the weaker the metallic bonding is between each of those atoms because the, each, each valence electron will hop off for metals and it'll form a delocalized sea of electrons, which is kind of like the glue. So you, if you are giving away fewer of these electrons into the electron C, then you have kind of less glue between them and therefore your metallic bonds are weaker. So sodium only has one valence electron. So that makes its metallic bonds pretty weak. And therefore we see a property where it's actually quite soft. So I should be able to cut this one in half. Before I cut it, let's go to a zoomed in view on the camera. So here's our close up. Here's a little piece of uh, the sodium metal. We store it in oil so that it doesn't automatically react with the atmosphere because sodium is actually very reactive. And so I should be able to cut this with a knife. Now for those people at home, the consistency that I experience here cutting it, it feels like doing a knife through styrofoam. And here is some of that exposed metal. And if you give it some time there, maybe if I pat it down with paper towel, we should start to see that this, this shine will actually start to go dull again as it starts to oxidize with the air around us. All right, so here I've just um, patted it down and that's the exposed surface that we had originally. In fact, you can't even see where it was cut originally because it's all pretty much gone dull. Yeah, so that's sodium, very soft, very weak metallic bonds because it has very few valence electrons available to go into the electron C, therefore very little metallic bonding between each other. Okay, so another property of the alkali metals, very much like the alkaline earth metals, where we, they both react with water. However, because sodium is so close to a full octet, it just has one excess electron to get rid of, it's desperate to throw that electron away and that's what makes it so reactive compared to other members of the same period on the periodic table. So for example, next to sodium we have, uh, I think it's magnesium, um, and yet magnesium reacts much more slowly. Uh, that's because it has two electrons. It's a little bit more difficult to throw those two electrons away compared to just throwing away one. So what we're gonna see here, it'll react with water and it'll also form a alkaline solution or a base solution. So what we're going to do here, let's add a little bit of our uh, friendly helper here, phenylphthalein. So if we get a alkali pH here, uh, that's anything above pH 7, we should start to, uh, or in this case, above 8.3, because that's the, the pH range where this starts to go pink. So I'm just going to put some drops of that in here. Again, phenylphthalein is colorless at every other pH below 8.3. Set that one aside. And we should also create um, gas. I'm just gonna add a little bit of detergent to our surface. So it just makes us a little bit soapy. 
And that way, if we do create gas, we should see bubble formation on the surface here. I'll stir it with my finger rather than the tongs. And now we can drop in our sodium. This, this uh, has a bit of a shield here to protect the viewers at home. My helper, of course, and my camera, most importantly, because it's very expensive. So let's give it a shot. Here's our first bit of uh, sodium metal. We've got two pieces here, so we may as well do it twice. So what happened just there is sodium will react with the surface. We can see a little bit of that pink um, color here. I hope that's picking up on camera. So we were making a little bit of that um, alkaline solution. Um, but what happened there is it was, it was reacting so quickly, so violently with the surface water that it got very hot. And when it reacts, it makes that hydrogen gas. And if it's doing it too quickly, it'll actually ignite that hydrogen gas. And that's why it went pop. Let's give it one more go, and I might stand a bit further away this time. So the, notice that the second one didn't go pop so quickly as the first one we put in there. I think the reason why that happened is because I actually, in the previous clip, I actually patted down one of them uh, with a paper towel to remove some of its oil surface. So one of them didn't have any oil on the metal surface and therefore it was able to react quite quickly and therefore reach that critical temperature to form that ignition. Whereas the second one, I didn't pat it down, I left it still covered in its original oil. And so the amount of contact it could make with the water was much more, um, uh, slowed down the rate and therefore didn't get as hot. So it tended to simmer for a bit longer on the surface. We can see that our bowl here, the water that was in that bowl has turned pink. That's our indicator at work, showing that this has risen to a, above a pH of 8.3. So this is now a alkaline solution. So let's just summarize what our properties are for the group one metals. Well, one, they are very reactive. Uh, they react readily with water. They are soft because they have softer uh, or weaker metallic bonds between their atoms because they only have one valence electron. They react with water to form an alkaline solution, so that's what we got here. They also react with water to release hydrogen gas, and that's what we got to see here in terms of the bubbles that we saw and also the ignition. Um, that's all I can think of for now, so we will um, meet you again in the next video.